Hello, I'm here today, dressed as a 16-year-old who gets bullied by everyone else in the chess club, to tell you guys all about Breach of Peace, which was a new novella just released by fellow booktuber Daniel Green, and I think it's pretty good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So fun story, while I was trying to get a copy of this, I bought it, or rather pre-ordered it from Amazon like a month ago, and then I saw everyone else was just releasing reviews already, so I assumed they got ARCs, and I was just like, oh, okay, I guess he just sent out a bunch and I wasn't on the list. Uh, and then I saw that, it, for whatever reason, Amazon was telling me that it's going to take until May to get the physical copy, so I was like, oh, okay, let's not do that then. I canceled it, and I just pre-ordered the Kindle edition, but then Amazon said, no, no, your order is actually going to be here much sooner than that. We're just saying it's late because reasons, and I can't cancel the order, so I guess enjoy the extra royalties. Also, I could have gotten an art copy if I had just asked, but I didn't know that at the time, so here I am. Anyways, Breach of Peace is a very short story. Like, like I said, it's a novella, and it's actually part of a planned trilogy of novellas, which is supposed to lead into a bigger series, which admittedly is a really cool idea. I don't think I've ever seen a series structured that way, and it remains to be seen how well it works, but I think, if nothing else, that is a really cool idea, and I want to give points for originality. And basically the storyline here is just that there is this police detective named Cleed, or Clid, I'm actually not sure how to say that, who comes in to investigate after an entire noble family is found brutally murdered and their bodies mutilated, and it's pretty clear this was meant to send a message, but like, who's sending it and why? I realized just a little while ago that this kind of feels like the prologue to a story, but it's just stretched out to a full novella. And that might sound like a criticism, but it's, it's really not. I think it's actually a good idea because there's a lot of prologues and stuff like, say, the first Game of Thrones book, you know, we get to, the audience gets to see, like, okay, the White Walkers are coming and they're not good, and there's these guys north of the wall who are supposed to fight them, but they're not prepared for it and they're not very good at it, and we just get introduced to this one character who's there only briefly, and then he dies, and so we as an audience get into the world a little bit, we understand the threat that the characters are going to face, and it, it's just a good way to get us right into the thick of things and get us interested. And this does basically the same thing, but we actually get to spend time with the characters as they're investigating and everything, so we actually still get a little bit attached to them, and so the, I, I at least was more interested in the story, and after this I'm way more interested in seeing where it goes than if this whole thing had been condensed into like 12 pages. I'll say right now that this is the best YouTuber book I've ever read, that's not a high bar to clear, but like I said, this this one is actually enjoyable. Like, I, I do like this one. Before this, the best YouTuber book I ever read was probably Shadow of the Conqueror. If you saw my review of that, you know I just kind of thought it was okay, and honestly my review of it was a little kinder than it probably should have been, because while there is some stuff in there that I really think is really cool, there's also stuff in there that is extremely stupid and extremely clumsy and extremely amateurish, so... It, it just kind of evens out. Whereas Breach of Peace overall is very solid, I think. I think the story is structured pretty well. Like, we have this mystery at the beginning. We want to know what's going on. Uh, I think the characters are all pretty good. Like, we have Cleed, Clid, however you say that, uh, her husband, some of the other inspectors and stuff, and they all have at least a little bit of personality to them. And they, uh, I, I don't know exactly how to put this, but they're not exaggerated characters, I think is the best way I can think to phrase it. Like, in a lot of stories, most of the main characters, at least, will have one or two very exaggerated qualities, like, way beyond what a normal person would be, you know, larger than life, you could say. Whereas, in this, pretty much every character we see is pretty much like a normal person, but they still feel like a fully realized individual, if that makes sense. Like, they don't have this exaggerated quality of like, oh, I'm so loyal to the state that I will cut off my own fingers and allow them to execute my son or anything like that. That, that has nothing to do with the book itself. That's just something I came up with off the top of my head. But it, it's nothing like that. They all still feel like regular people doing regular things that regular people would do, but they're still caught up in these extraordinary circumstances, and so that is still neat to me. I don't know how to talk about the setting exactly, because we don't get that much info on it. We, 
it seems kind of like Victorian England almost in a lot of ways. Uh, plus there is some magic off in the background, but that doesn't play as big a role in this story. And th there's some hints that the what's going on out there is a lot different than it first appears. Like there are some hints in like the way their government is structured and uh, the way the world works and just things like that. I don't, I don't even know how to quite explain it because we don't get that much info on it. And it looks really cool, but I just wish we had more there. You know, like if you're gonna spend three entire novellas just building up to the main story, I would say take advantage of the time you're using and like really get us into this world, really get us involved with it, really let us step in and walk around. And maybe the next two will deal with that, I can't say for certain, but that is like one thing in here that I would say is a bit disappointing. And there's very little else in here that I would call a problem. Like, I was kind of annoyed at how quickly the ending came. Like, it just kind of felt like, oh, that's over, and I guess I have to wait for the next novella to know what's going on. And in fact, I'm probably going to wait until the second and third ones come out and then just read them together so I'm not waiting as long. Um, and then there's one scene near the end where basically Cleet is running away from something and she runs into some total strangers who go to a lot more trouble to help her than maybe... It, it just we seemed weird to me that they would go to that much trouble. And also you could just cut that scene out and it really wouldn't change anything. So I, I'm not sure why it was there and it did bother me a bit. And the only other thing that I can really comment on is uh, the writing itself, the prose, I think is generally pretty good. Like, it's certainly better than pretty much every other YouTuber book I've read. Like, the last one I read was Zenith, and that one just felt like bad fanfiction a lot of the time. And before that, uh, there was Shadow of the Conqueror, which, while I didn't think it was terrible, the writing itself felt like bad fiction almost all of the time. <laughs> like... It, it just was not good. Whereas this is pretty good, yes, uh, except for a few points where it just feels awkward and maybe could have used another run-through. Like, for example, there's one part part where they're describing this thing called an anointed, and they describe it as, quote, a demigod created by God, which just, that's just a weird, awkward way of phrasing it because you're using the same word twice in a sentence, and I'm not exactly sure what it means, but it's, it's just, it is not a good way of putting it. And there are a few little moments like that throughout the book, but overall, it is solidly written. I didn't really have any issues telling what was going on. And, well, one really, really nitpicky thing is that Cleed's name is weird. Not because it's weird on its own, like, I've read fantasy before, you can have weird stuff in there, that's fine, but it, it's weird because her name feels very foreign, whereas everyone else in the story has names like Sam and Chapman, which feel, they sound English, so I'm not sure why her name was different, or if there was any purpose to that at all, and there was no explanation given, really, so... I don't know, that just bothered me. Overall, though, Breach of Peace, pretty solid start by a uh, first-time author, I think that, especially for a self-published first-time author, because the track record for those is just not great, but... I think Daniel did a pretty good job here. I am looking forward to reading the next couple of novellas, which lead into the main series. Uh, it remains to be seen how good the series as a whole is, but I think this, at least, as a prologue, is a really good start. And uh, that's about all. So buy my merchandise. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Are you already subscribed? Consider becoming a channel member. I have surgery coming up. Alright, you know how this works by now. All the names on here are people that gave me money, and the people that gave me $10 and more are Apo Savalanian, Olivia Rayan, Ava Toomer, Brandon S. Pilcher, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Datboy805, Embus, Pfizer, Jeremy, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Kevin Jang, Liza Rudakova, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mel Austin, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and Vevictus. You guys are the best. If you want stuff like early access to my videos, or just voting on future video topics, then consider sending me money. And if you don't want to do that, then become a YouTube channel member, or just like this video, share it around and stuff. It really does help. And uh, that's uh, about everything I'm supposed to say here, so I'll see you later. Bye.